everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by touchvid.com. Now today we're going to take a look at creating this pretty cool gem effect in Adobe Illustrator completely from scratch. It was uh, inspired by a little piece of artwork I saw on Dribble. We're going to give a shout out to the uh, artist who did that. I'll have his link down in the description as well. We're going to create this thing in Illustrator. We're going to cover all kinds of amazing, really cool stuff. I'm going to show you kind of, it's really not that difficult. Um, it's fairly easy once you kind of understand how we're going to create sort of the 3D, more geometric-y, hexagonal shape or whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's get started. All right, so here we are. This is the finished product. Uh, you can see all these different colored sides and all the highlights in between the sides and a little sparkle and shadow and stuff like that. Now, this was inspired by this guy here, this Einhorn gem, as you can see. Very, very similar, right? Um, it was inspired by this. I saw it, thought it was really cool. It's just a little icon created all the way back in 2012. Wow. Um, but we are going to do this, and I'm going to show you how to kind of strip his entire color palette out of here. We're not going to use uh, this little uh, donkey bucket whatever it's called here on Dribble, we're going to just use the image and I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to quickly create a bunch of swatches in Illustrator. So without further ado, oh, and, and there is this whole background here. I don't know if we'll create the background though. It's just kind of a, a little something, something. Uh, let's create here a new document and get to work creating this. So I'm going to go new document and we're going to say 3940 by 2560 uh, because we want it to be nice and large. So go ahead and create it. It's maybe a little bit important for you to work at the same size I'm working because right off the bat, we're going to come over here to our shape tools and choose the polygon tool. And I'm going to click once and create a six sided polygon with a radius of 550 pixels. So if your document's a little smaller, a little larger, um, the size of this polygon is going to be a little off and you know I don't know it might just be easiest to follow along using a document that's 3940 by 2560 but hey you know what I'm not your mother or father so do what you want to do as well it doesn't matter that much I'm going to drag this down to the center and by the way you can probably see and this will be important later on under view I have smart guides turned on I also have snap to point turned on um, we're going to touch on them a little bit more in just a moment here now we're going to get rid of the fill here within our shape I'm going to maintain that black stroke so I'm going to select my fill and just hit my forward slash key that's going to kill the fill get rid of it we have a tiny little stroke um, i'm going to increase that so over here in the stroke panel i'm going to bump this up to i don't know five yeah, probably just five points that's fine see very easy to see a hexagon right in the middle um, in fact we can just go align to artboard and choose to align that to the very center and i'm also going to rotate it so i'm going to hold down my shift key and i'm going to hover near one of these corner anchor points when i see the side to side arrow I'm going to rotate once, twice, and boom, get a perfect 90-degree rotation. Uh, the key here is we want our points on the top and bottom. So you see how the, you know, the sides are just kind of straight up and down. Now, we've got this shape over here in our layers panel. In fact, I'm going to collapse my color panel here. I'm going to drag my layer panel upward a little bit so it's a little bit larger. From the flyout menu, panel options, I'm going to make my thumbnails about 60 pixels. They should be a little easier to see, right? We can see, hey, look, there that is. Um, in fact, we can double-click and just name this layer gem. Um, because we're going to be creating our gem here. Uh, we've got So we've got our shape here in the middle of the document. Before we do anything, I'm going to copy and paste this right in place by going uh, edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. If I hit the little twirl down menu, I've got two polygons now. I'm going to shut the top one off, and I'm going to double click, and I'm going to name the bottom one uh, base guide, and I'm going to select it, and we're going to go view, guides, make guides. And you can see it just converts the shape to this guide, right? Great. It's right there. It's locked in. This is going to be really, really important here. It's going to be super easy for us to uh, create some cool drawings doing this. Now, we're going to create a couple uh, additional guides before we go any further. So hit Command or Control R. It's going to bring up your uh, rulers. And I'm going to drag my first guide out and place it. You see how th this the guide passes through this point right here, right? That little corner and also that little corner. I, I like that, but I need this guide to be a bit kind of south of that so let's drag it down to about right there and let's drag another point out and again here I'm gonna place it beneath this point and this point over here on my my polygon so I'm gonna drag it down to about probably right there that's pretty good now we have our initial guides and we're gonna get command or control R to make our rulers go away and now we can grab the pen tool and with the pen tool we're gonna dra uh, draw a simple triangle so I'm gonna hover with my pen tool and this is where those smart guides become important by the way view smart guides uh, because with the pen tool when I hover over the top of my guide see how it says hey anchor and that's that's where two anchor or that's where an anchor point is placed because two paths come together yes I want to place I want to start my point exactly on that very very precise spot and I want to drag it all the 
way down to the anchor here on this corner, and then drag it over to the anchor on this corner, and then drag it back up to the anchor and complete my shape. Great. So we have this triangle now seemingly randomly placed in the middle of our hexagon. Now what we need to do is, still with the pen tool selected, you can just hover over your path, and I need to place an anchor point right where this guideline here passes through the triangle on both sides. So if I hover over, you can see I get a little pop-up little bit of text that says intersect. That means I'm going to place an anchor point, and the little plus by my pen icon means I'm going to add an anchor point. When I click, it's going to add an anchor point exactly right where this path uh, runs perpendicular or intersects, I should say, with this guide path. So same thing here on the other side, intersect, boom. Now we also want to place a path on the bottom exact middle of the stretch of our triangle. And this is where Smart Guides also helps us because here with intersect, you can see it's saying, hey, look, there's the middle of the triangle. Boom, I add an anchor point and we're good to go. Next up, I'm going to grab the direct selection tool. So direct selection tool, the hotkey is the letter A. And I'm going to select these anchor points one at a time. So I'm going to take this anchor point, and I'm just going to click and drag it straight down until it clicks on onto my guide down here, great. And then the anchor points here, I'm gonna start one at a time, I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and tap the left arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, maybe nine times, something like that. Well, you know, let's do eight times actually, I think eight's gonna look good. I'm gonna select this one now, I'm gonna hold down shift and hit my right arrow key eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, so now that we've done that, let's go back to our black arrow tool and we're gonna select our entire sort of modified, bizarre looking triangle here and we're gonna convert this shape to a guide as well. Now the hotkey to convert something to a guide is simply command and the number five. So just command or control and the number five and you can see we have that converted uh, to a guide as well. If we take a peek over here at our layers panel, we still have our original polygon. I'm just going to drag that above everything. It's still hidden. We don't see it. Um, I've got our two, or our new guide, and then I've got our two sort of flat guides running through the horizontal guides. I'm going to hide those. We don't need them right now. Now what we need to do is begin drawing all of the pieces of our gemstone um, to just initially give us an idea, a, a, a visual point of reference. I know exactly where I'm drawing them, but maybe it'll make it easier uh, for you to kind of follow along as we do this. Let's place our reference graphic. So I just kind of snagged the um that einhorn graphic from dribble this one right here so i'm gonna go file place and i'm just gonna place it uh right there hex gemstone reference i'm gonna hit place and i'm just gonna drop it in wherever i'm gonna make it quite a bit larger hold down my shift key and just drag this sucker up and i can see i i'm, I'm creating this triangle and this triangle and this triangle this triangle yada 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 so i'm gonna leave this kind of right here and let's go ahead and begin drawing our triangles so i've got my linked file i'm just gonna lock that so i don't accidentally do damage to it grab my pen tool and now these are all guides, so we're going to follow that same uh, that same principle as we did before with the anchor thing. So anchor there, great. And by the way, you can see we've got no fill and just a black stroke that's perfect. And then come up to here to anchor, great, and click and come back to here, anchor, and then join. Great, first triangle done. Now, when you go to create another triangle, if you just click on an existing anchor that's touching the shape you just drew, see that minus that appears next to the pen tool? That's going to delete that anchor point. We don't want that. So you need to hold down the shift key. It's going to allow you to create a new shape. And then come down to anchor, come across to anchor, go up to anchor. Great. Hold down shift. Let's begin at this anchor. Come down to this anchor, cross over to that anchor, and anchor, 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 anchor. Great. So we have our three top triangles. You can see these correspond. We've got this triangle, this triangle, this triangle. So now let's draw our triangles down here. So I'm going to uh, shift click and then click and click. And I'm just, I'm watching. As soon as I see the word anchor, I know that I'm lined up perfectly. Hold down shift. Drag down to here, anchor. Now for this, I'm going to drag out to this center anchor. Remember the, the path point or the anchor point that we dragged down to that lower horizontal guide. I'm going to place my triangle there and then swing it back around. Great. And now I'm going to hold down shift, anchor, come across, anchor. This is going to be sort of our main central focal triangle right in the middle. Hold down shift, add our anchor point there. We're creating another shape. And anchor, 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 anchor. Great. Hold down shift. And let's keep drawing these little triangles. Great. All right, so we've got all of our top triangles now. We just need two simple lower triangles. You see that? Two simple lower triangles. So hold down Shift, going Anchor, to Anchor, to Anchor, back to, you guessed it, Anchor. And then hold down Shift, Anchor to Anchor, to Anchor, to Anchor. Voila. Love it. So I can back this off. Uh, we can get rid of our, actually, we're not going to get rid of our reference because we're going to use that in just a moment. I'm going to collapse my stroke, swatches, color panels here for just a quick second. I'm going to drag this up, 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 up. 
and I'm just gonna hide it to get it out of the way for a second. You can see all of these different shapes here. These are all the little triangles that we just drew. Let's grab our move tool and deselect, and you can see we have all of these different shapes. We can actually just hide our guides now because we don't need them anymore either. We have the base of our triangle. Let's check something out though. If I zoom in, look at my corners. See how they're all kind of messed up? They're sticking out and spiking all over the place. They look really messy. Well, let's fix that real quick before we go any further. What we want to do is just select the whole thing, drag a selection out over it, open up the stroke panel, so double click until it opens up, and here from the corners we want to choose a round joint corner, or a round join corner I should say. When we do that it's going to get rid of all the spiky, spiky uh, stuff that we really don't want. And the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and build our color palette. So up here in swatches, what we want to do is have a sort of a custom set of colors that's going to be for the gradients in this gem. There are very specific colors in this effect. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, create that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn this linked file on. In fact, I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to grab it with my just regular selection tool and I'm going to drag it over to here. Because what we're going to do, you know what, and let's do this on a separate layer. Let's create a new layer here. I can collapse this layer. And I'm going to name this layer Colors. All right, we'll keep this above everything else. That way we can easily shut it off, turn it on, whatever. I'm going to drag my linked layer up into the Colors layer. And I can just lock up my gem layer for the time being. We don't need to touch it right now. This is kind of cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over this image and we're going to place a little circle. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool. I'm going to place a little circle wherever there's a color that I think I need to copy. So the idea is going to be to create a custom gradient for each one of these triangles based upon the gradients that are already in this gradient or in this gradient in this image. Um, and then we can go ahead and tweak and adjust them later on if we decide we want a totally different color palette. So I'm going to just set my fill here to this dark grayish black color, and I'm going to drag out a tiny little circle up there, so you can see that. In fact, I'm going to lock my linked uh, file just so I don't accidentally select it and drag it around. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to take that dark blue. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and drag out an additional point of color, which is going to be a blue down here. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna drag out a ton of these points and drop one wherever I want a color. So I'm gonna alt drag to here because I'm gonna copy that color. Alt drag to down here, so that'll be that gradient for that triangle. Let's alt drag over to here because we're gonna need that green going to this sort of greenish yellow, and then we're gonna need this sort of like weird greenish orangey yellow to that more orangey yellow, and then we're gonna go like this muted dark orange to this very deep red, and we're gonna go this very like maroon red to this sort of magenta pinkish purplish color. Great. So we have all of our outer triangles, those are going to be the color points for them. Just hang with me here. This is uh, kind of a neat way to quickly build a bunch of swatches. Uh, I'm going to alt drag this into this triangle because I want to take the pink from the top of that triangle. And I also want to take a pink from the bottom of that triangle. I want to take sort of a bluish pink from the top of this triangle. And then even a color from the middle here, maybe like this yellow. Uh, and then I'm going to alt and drag down here to get more of this rich yellow down at the bottom of this triangle. Now I'm going to come over here. I want to take the green from that corner. I want to take the tealish color from in there. And then more of that darkish blue color from the top corner. And last but not least, this triangle here, we're going to take that reddish orange. That kind of yellowish color. Yeah, I'm probably just that yellowish color. That's it. So these are all the different colors we need to get. So here's how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select each of these little points. And I'm going to hold down or I don't need to hold anything down, I'm just going to press my I key, which is going to give me my eyedropper, and I can just sample that dark blue and hit the letter V. It's going to take me back to my selection tool. That little dot now has that exact dark blue. I can go to the next dot, hit I, select the color I want. Great, we just filled that dot. And then just keep going around your shape and filling all of these dots with the colors which uh, you like. So I'm going to speed this along here. I'm just going to grab all my colors, and I'll be back in just a second, and I will show you just how cool this is. All right, so you can see we have a bunch of colored dots that very closely resemble uh, the, all the colors here in our little hex gem. All I need to do now is just select all of these colors, all these little dots, and then over here in the swatches panel, I'm going to hit this little folder icon, which is the new color group button. Hit that, and a little dialog is going to pop up, say, hey, look, name this color group. I'm going to name it Hex Gem, and I'm going to say, look, create this from the selected artwork, and also convert process to global. This is going to make sure these are global colors. So once we use them, we can edit the color in the swatches panel, and it will automatically update that color in our artwork here in this document. Uh, and I go ahead and tick on include swatches for tints as well hit OK and you can see here what we've done is we've just gotten all of those colors that we're going to need for this project boom lined up in one straight line in our swatches panel at this point 
I'm just going to shut off, or maybe not shut it off, but just lock the colors uh, layer, and we're going to go back and work on the gem again. And the first thing we want to do is start to utilize those colors, so I'm going to select the entire gem. Uh, we can get rid of, well, no, we're not going to get rid of the stroke yet, I don't think. Let's go ahead and just apply a gradient to each of these shapes. So I've just selected them all, just like that. You can see I'm going to go to the gradient panel and just select my gradient uh, swatch. And you can see, boom, there we go. We've got a bunch of gradients applied uh, right off the bat. Now we want to go ahead and begin building each gradient for each shape. And here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to do it for a couple of them, and then I'm going to leave you to kind of fend for yourself, and I'm going to speed through the video so as to save a little bit of time here in this tutorial. Uh, but what you want to do is select, let's start with this triangle up here and we know this is going to be this very dark bluish purple to a, just a, a bit lighter uh, bluish purplish color as well. So what I want to do is I need to find these swatches in my swatches panel. Now I find this is easiest if I set this to the list view because I can kind of check out, um, I can just see sort of the values here in uh, in my swatches panel. And here we go, hex gem, this is our group right here. And what will happen is if I select this little, we need to unlock our colors layer, if I select this little color point, I can see here there's that dark blue. So I can make a mental note, that's B58, and this one is B112. So when I come back here, I can select this gradient, and I can drag, where's B58, there's B58, I can drag that in and just hover over that color stop, it's going to replace it, and B112, there it is, hover over that color stop and it will replace it. And then I'll take my gradient tool and I'll just draw the gradient in the direction it's supposed to go. So the light blue down here to dark blue up there. Great. Now I'll just select this shape, the, the sort of the center triangle here, and I can, well, I can check check these shapes first. And I can see that's the purplish magenta color with B179 and a 253. So they're stacked right on top of each other. Though. That should be easy to remember. So I'll select this, and we've got that gradient selected. I'm going to go 179, boom, 253, bam, and then I'm going to use my gradient tool, and I'm going to drag it straight up and down, and there we go. We've got our sort of light a light pink on the bottom, going to a darker, more magenta pink on the top. Great. And these colors are going to look really weird as you line them up next to each other. They really don't start to come together until we start to blend them a little bit. So just, you know, kind of trust the process a little bit here. Now I'm going to select this triangle. Uh, let's see, this is B109 and mixed with the very topmost red. So B109 going to the very topmost red in my list here. So where's B? There's B109 right there. So I'm going to set that. And I'm going to go grab that very topmost red. Whoop. I don't, I see I just selected that uh, swatch straight up so it filled the shape with that. So go back to select your gradient to reapply the gradient and just drag that red and drop it on the color swatch. Great. Use the gradient tool here and let's just drag that color into place. Whoop. I dragged it the wrong way. Let's try that again. There we go, we have that shape in place. You can see just that nice magenta going to the red. So I'm gonna speed this video up. I'm gonna go through and fill the rest of these triangles with the perfect uh, gradient, and then we're gonna get adding some highlights and depth and really making this thing look super duper cool. All right, so there we go. We have our gem with all the colors. It actually kind of looks pretty cool right now, but there's still so much more we can do to make it look really, really neat. Um, I'm going to collapse my gradient panel and my swatches panel for a quick second here. Uh, what I want to do, I'm going to select all these shapes, and I'm going to get rid of the stroke altogether by just moving or selecting the stroke down here and just hitting my forward slash key. You can see now it really looks even cooler. And I'm going to group this. So right now you can see it's all these just, you know, random shapes in my panel. I'm going to hit Command or Control G, group them up, and now I can just very quickly select this and and duplicate it, move it around, whatever. And in fact, I am going to duplicate this because we want to reapply those strokes, but we need them to be as kind of a separate shape. I'll show you why in a second. So hit Command or Control C, and then Command or Control F to paste it right in front. You paste in front because we want this to be pasted in the exact place, but also make sure the layer appears here on top of the stack. Uh, now what we can do here is give this a white stroke. So I'm going to hit the white, uh, little white swatch here up in my color panel, and the stroke is brought to the front, so it's going to give it a white stroke. It's still only one point. We're going to adjust that in a second. Well, you know what, actually? Let's adjust it right now on the stroke panel. Let's bring it up to about six points. And I need to get rid of the fill. So I'm going to select the fill stroke. See, it's a question mark. It's a question mark because all these have different gradients, but we can still get rid of all of them by just hitting the slash. The reason that we're bringing this up to its own layer, and let's call this uh, stroke highlight or something like that. The reason that I'm bringing up to its own layer is because I want to change the blend mode and I want this to sort of blend with the shape beneath it. Now, one thing that's very, very important, because we just reapplied this stroke, it has gone back to the sharp corners. We know that's going to be a problem, so we want to make sure we change it to round join uh, so we're not setting ourselves up for any kind of trouble here. Let's go to the transparency panel, and we have the entire layer selected. See this little circle here? And we're going to set the entire layer to the blend mode of soft light. 
And if I, whoop, if I select my move tool here, the black tool, and let me just zoom back out, and I deselect, you can see we now have this pretty cool uh, stroke that's interacting with the colors beneath it. That's really neat. We're going to duplicate the stroke by just selecting the whole layer, hitting Command or Control C, and then Command or Control F to paste it in place. And we're going to uh, mask this so there's a greater highlight concentration up here in sort of the top left corner of our gem. So select the layer by selecting the little circle there in the Layers panel. We're going to go back to the Appearance panel, or not the Appearance panel, I'm sorry, the Transparency panel, and we're going to click on this little uh, thumbnail here and it's going to apply a mask. I'm sorry, you double click on it and it's going to apply an alpha mask. It's filled with black so everything has disappeared. So we're going to take, let's take the ellipse tool here and just draw out a nice big circle just like that and we're going to fill this with a black to white gradient. So right now all we have is a, a stroke on this circle. So I'm going to just that little swap arrow so now it fills the entire circle with white. You can see that we have an entire circle filled with white. I want this to be filled with a gradient though. So let's go back to the gradient editor and let's select gradient and I'm going to go back to my swatches in fact set them back to thumbnail mode and I'm going to choose the black to white gradient and down here in the gradient panel well I might want to take a look at the transparency panel to see what's happening here white is over on the left side of my mask black is on the right side so over here the stroke is going to be very visible over here not so visible because white shows black hides so I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'm going to drag just a short gradient in from right there now I can see that I do have a little bit of a problem here because the black in my gradient is not a true black black it's more like a charcoal black so let's go back to gradient select that color handle and drag all these color stops down to solid black there we go something like that. Back to the transparency panel. There we go. Now it's blending in. So we can see basically what's happening is up here, our stroke is going to be a full blast power, but it's going to fade once you get to about right here in the gem. So we're sort of doubling up the, that stroke, the edge highlights of the gem up here in the top corner of our gem. Now to get out of the mask edit, you can see in our layers panel, we're editing an opacity mask. Just select this thumbnail over here and you can see, voila, we're back to our original layers. And next what we need to do is sort of build some depth. So we need to kind of fake depth for this uh, this gem that we're creating. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, let's actually just duplicate one of these highlight layers again. The one that's not masked maybe so we don't have to deal with deleting a mask um, unnecessarily. So I'm going to select it, hit Command or Control C and then Command or Control F to paste it in front and I'm immediately going to rename it. See it's this one that got pasted right here. I'm going to immediately rename it uh, Depth. And I'm going to drag it to the top here. So I'm going to drag it all the way up. There we go. Depth. And with this, what I need to do is go Object Transform Reflect. And we're going to reflect this along the vertical axis. So I'm going to preview it. And what it's doing is it's flipping it completely upside down. So let's just hit OK. Oh, I'm sorry. We want to flip it along the horizontal axis. What am I thinking? Not the vertical axis. Flipping it along the horizontal axis will flip it vertically. There we go. That's what I should have been thinking. And you can see here with preview ticked on, we can see that it's definitely doing something. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and just deselect and check out what we've got. It looks a bit overpowering now. Um, the highlights are all competing with one another. We need to sort of fade this to the background and make it look like it belongs back there. How do we do that? Well, we still want to definitely keep this depth layer on the front, but we can sort of fake it and make it look like it's supposed to be in the back by doing a couple little things. First and foremost, I'm going to make sure I have it selected here. I want to make sure it's back to the blend mode of normal. We're going to probably set it to soft light and reduce the opacity in a moment, but for the sake of working on it easily here, I want to work with this. I'm going to also, um, I'm going to leave the white stroke because we need that, but I want to select individual shapes in here. So I'm going to open up this depth group and each of these paths that you can see here, if I collapse my transparency panel, we can bring them all onto screen. Each of these paths is one of these triangles. So if I just deselect and I select like this triangle here, you can see it selected the top left triangle. What we want to do is select a couple of these triangles, fill them with white, and a couple of them and fill them with black. So I'm going to select both of the side triangles. So I'm going to go with this guy here. Well, you know what? Here, this will make this easier. Let's um, let's lock the other hexagon layers so we don't accidentally select and alter them. So now we're working just with our depth. And actually, if I select this way using these circles and just clicking around until I get the ones I want. All right, there's one of the side pieces. I want that. So now I just hold down my Command or Control key and I can select multiple pieces. I don't want that piece. I don't want the middle triangle. I don't want that triangle. There we go. There's the other side triangle. It might be difficult to see, but we've selected both of these sort of sidemost triangles. And I want to select the bottom right triangle, yep, and the bottom center triangle. And all I need to do here is select, set the fill, so I can just double click on my fill here and just set it to black. So hit OK, and we're going to fill our, our 
shapes here with black. They didn't fill with black. Obviously, it, it was white. Let's go back and make sure we choose black. Hit OK. There we go. That time it filled them with black. And next, what we want to do is select the top right triangle up here. So that's going to be this triangle. We want to select the very center triangle, this guy right down here. And we also want to select the bottom left triangle. So just kind of this triangle, this triangle, that triangle. And these ones we do want to fill with white. So we're going to make sure we fill them up here with white. Boom. So this looks very bizarre right now. We've got a few black triangles, a few white triangles. But what's going to happen here is, remember, we still have the six-point white stroke on all of these shapes. When we select this and we knock this back to soft light, and then we go ahead and reduce the opacity. So we'll probably reduce the opacity to like 20%. You can see it's going to almost make it look like there's a backside of the gem. And there's other like crystallization and stuff going on inside of our initial gem. You see, there's without depth. There it is with depth. And you can go ahead and adjust this however you like, whether you want to go uh, soft light or overlay, maybe tweak the opacity up or down, all to your taste. It's going to depend on the colors of your gem and the brightness of those colors and a lot of different uh, factors. But right here, soft light and 20% opacity, as you can see up here in the transparency panel, they work pretty well. And now it's time that we add even more depth to the sort of outside part of the shape. So remember we created that additional polygon. We, we copied and pasted and just kind of shut it off when we first began. Well, we're going to select that guy and drag him up to the top here. And I'm going to turn him on, or I'm just going to select him. He is turned on now. Um, and you can see there's a black stroke applied to it of five points. I think I'm going to boost this. Um, to maybe six or seven or eight, nine, ten, something pretty big, and you're, you're going to start to see kind of this uh, this little bit of black border coming out around our polygon. That's pretty good. I'm going to select and duplicate this polygon. So I'm going to go Command or Control C, and of course, as we talked about a moment ago, Command or Control F to paste it in place. And this one that's pasted in place now, we're going to mess with the the border here for this guy. In fact, we'll name him uh, Border, and this one is going to be a, a shadow. So, well, if I can spell shadow, wow. Let's go shadow, there we go. So with this one, I can actually just get rid of this border altogether. So just hit the little slash icon. And here we're gonna go effect, stylize, inner glow. And I'm gonna hit preview to turn this on. And I'm going to go with a mode of normal and 100% opacity, a blur of 144 pixels. And now it's time that we add even more depth to our little gem shape. So remember that polygon we created back at the beginning, this guy right here? We're going to turn it on and we're going to drag him up to the top of our layer stack. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate him. So I'm going to just hit Command or Control C and then Command or Control F to paste him right in front. And what happened there is I didn't have the layer selected. So let me just undo that. Let's make sure we have the uh, actual layer selected. Command or Control C, Command or Control F to paste it in front. We're going to shut that one off. For a second because what we want to do is just create a little inner glow for this so let's just uh, name this layer inner glow uh, you can name it shadow whatever I'm gonna select it so I just hit the little circle and we're gonna get rid of the out uh, the outer stroke altogether and we're gonna give it a fill of white so I'm just gonna select the fill and then select the white up there and you can see whoa we've made everything go away well we have but we're gonna bring it back in a second hang hang tight here for a moment let's go effect stylize inner glow I'm going to turn preview on, and these are the settings that I want for this size shape. Normal mode, black as the color of the inner glow, opacity at 100%, and a blur of 140, 150, I believe 144 is the highest it'll let me go here, so yeah, 144 uh, is just golden, and then an edge inner glow is perfect. Preview, you can just see it, hit OK. We've applied that inner glow. Now we want to set this inner glow layer up here in the transparency panel once more to the blend mode of soft light. Now, what soft light is going to do is not only will it darken the outside parts of the gem, but it will brighten the inner parts of the gem. And if it's a little bit too extreme for you, you can select it and always reduce the opacity. Maybe it's a little too harsh for me. I'll go down to like 70, 75% opacity. Uh, that looks pretty good. And then what we're going to do is turn the, the polygon here back on. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this guy stroke or border or something like that. Select them. And we're going to just boost the stroke a bit. So just kind of until we can really see it really well. So maybe up to 15, 16, 20 points, something like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to give it a very, very light gray color. So make sure I have the stroke selected, not the fill. I can come up here to my color uh, panel and I'm going to choose, um, by the way, I just hit the little fly out menu option there, that little fly out menu icon. Go ahead and select that and choose HSB, hue saturation brightness that is. Uh, we're going to make sure there's no saturation and set the brightness to, I don't know, something pretty dark, maybe like 20, 25%, something like that. It'll go a little darker, maybe right around 20% on the brightness factor. It's going to give me a relatively dark gray uh, surrounding my gemstone. And you can, of course, color your stroke, make it as big or small as you want. I'm going to actually take this down to about 16 point. That looks a little bit better. 
And I think what I want to do next is select this group down here, uh, which is the original colored gem group. And we're going to hit Command or Control C. If it's still locked, make sure you unlock it. Command or Control C, Command or Control F to just paste it in front. And we're going to drag this guy all the way up to the top of our layer group here. Let me undo that. Let's make sure we drag it up to the top proper. And when you do that, the thumbnail might look a little weird. Don't worry about that. It's definitely on top of everything. You can see just like that. And I'm going to select uh, the little circle there to load it as a selection. To make, not really load it as a selection. To make sure I have that entire new gem selected. Uh, and in fact, we'll call this contrast boost or something uh, like that. And up here in the transparency panel, simply set this to the blend mode of like overlay. And then maybe even reduce the opacity down to like 50, 60 percent. Something like that. And you can see before and after, we're just really pumping the contrast. And what that's also going to do is really help differentiate the front of our gem from that faux backside of the gem and help that depth uh, inside and outside of the gem that much more. Another thing I think we want to do here is add a little sparkle right over here. He, the original designer had added kind of a cool sparkle there. I kind of dig it. Um, so here's what we'll do. We'll grab the ellipse tool here and we'll just simply draw out a nice little circle. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, just drag out a nice little circle there, grab my move tool. I'm going to drag it right above kind of that little intersecting area, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, in fact, it might be a little bit more realistic if it's not really exact. Now, this shape has no fill, no stroke. So let's select the fill down here. I can just double click and make sure that it's filled with a nice white. Hit OK. There we go. It's uh, filled with white. Let's go effect uh, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's give this a decent sized Gaussian blur, maybe of like 100 pixels. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit more. Maybe we'll go like 125. Let's hit OK. And now check this out. Actually, this is really interesting. Um, sometimes in Illustrator, when you apply a, a raster effect, many of these effects, most of these effects, in fact, are raster. They may be smart effects or appearances, but they're still at, it, at their heart raster effects. You can see how it's like cut everything off, and it's not giving me a smooth blur. It's giving me a smooth blur to a point, and then it just abruptly chops it off. Well, you can actually adjust this. If you go Effect, Document, Raster, Effects, Settings, and down here, you see this Add Around an Object? Well, right now it's only adding 36 pixels. Let's boost that to like 125 pixels and hit OK. Watch our blur. Boom. Now the blur is nice and smooth. So cool, right? Love that. Um, now, with this ellipse, we're going to call this uh, Glow. And we can set this to, we can try giving it a blend mode of like overlay. I think I'm just going to leave it as like screen. Um, and I could reduce the opacity a little if I wanted. Something like, I don't know, somewhere around 80, 90 is still going to be about what you want. I'm not going to mess with it too much. Now to create a little sparkle, let's grab the star tool. And you can see here, well, I already have a, a, a star drawn out, but if I didn't have a star drawn out, and you're just using the normal standard star, and it looks kind of something like this, here's how you convert this to that star shape. Number one, you use the down arrow key to make it a four-sided star. By the way, up arrow key adds arms to your star. Let's go with a four-sided one, and then hold down your command or control key and pull out, and it's going to sort of elongate uh, and give you more of like a sparkle graphic. So I'm going to just rotate it maybe, kind of something like that. Great. And I'll drag this over, place it on top of my little glow. And I can, this is my sparkle here, so I can even name it sparkle. And I can just set this to a blend mode of probably soft light in this case. I think overlay might be a bit too much. Uh, you know, maybe overlay would be just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, I think overlay actually looks pretty good. Um, so there we go. We can add that little sparkle. And maybe it's still a little bit too hefty, um, just too big. It does probably need to be rotated as well. Something more like that. And let's make it much, much smaller. It's a little bit more subtle. And the glow as well probably needs to be a little smaller, but that means that our blur is going to make it virtually non-existent. Um, so on the glow layer, I've selected that. We can double click to open up the appearance. And there's our Gaussian blur. We can double click to enter into that. And maybe only blur it by like 50 pixels or something, maybe even less. Let's go tick on preview so we can see it. Uh, yeah, 45, 50 pixels will probably be just right. And then we can just kind of move this, navigate it around until it looks just how we want it to look. And there we go. We have a nice little... Uh, we have a nice little sparkle, and I still feel like it needs to be rotated a little bit. Mm, how do I want to do it? Maybe something like that. That looks pretty good. All right, so there we go. We've created that gem shape. All that's left to do is you can do something like throw a little shadow beneath it um, by just you know using the ellipse tool once more and create like a you know just a nice little small shape like that. Fill it with you know probably a black or a very very dark gray. I'm going to go with black in this case. And again, effect. We'll choose Gaussian blur. And we'll just give this a nice. Uh, Gaussian blur of probably like 75, maybe. Go ahead and hit OK. Great. It's right there in place. We could nudge it over a little bit. And then with this, we can, I'm going to name the layer here Shadow. 
uh, what we'll want to do is double click to collapse your appearance pal pal panel palette. I was caught between palette and panel there. Uh, grab the opacity slider and just reduce the opacity to, I don't know, you know, 30, 40 pixels, or 30, 40 pixels, 30, 40%. Again, this is all simply going to depend on the darkness of your existing background. So you can see there we've thrown a little shadow. It actually looks kind of ratty. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit narrower, something kind of like that, a little more flat. Nudge it right up under there. Um, just a nice subtle shadow. And then crank this up to like 65 or something. I don't know. Something like that. So we have a little tiny, tiny shadow beneath our gem. And of course, we can hide our colors now. So we're just looking at our gem itself. And, you know, it took a little while. But we went ahead and we created this entire geometric shape from scratch. And I think the real takeaway here is going to be just the power of using shapes to create guides in Adobe Illustrator. It's amazing. And then with the smart guides turned on and snap the point turned on, you can just, you know, click, 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 create these super complex shapes. But also and more importantly, super precise shapes. If you look at this geometric gem, nothing is overlapping. It's all just perfectly butted up to each other and meshed right in. So all these colors and highlights and everything meld together and form this really, really cool gem. Now, if you enjoyed this video, leave a little like on it below. Also, drop a comment if you feel so inclined. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you'll never miss another tutorial in the future, especially if you love Illustrator tutorials or Photoshop or Lightroom or video editing. We do it all here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And for creating a three-dimensional, hexagonal, six-sided, or more than six sides, really, gem shape in Adobe Illustrator, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.